The judiciary is in focus as the battle for the throne of Kano lingers, with courts granting conflicting orders on who should rightfully occupy the emir's seat. The legal twists and turns have caught the attention of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Kayode Ariwala. Ariwala has summoned the two chief judges who issued the court orders to explain themselves. Reports indicate that the National Judicial Council, NJC, is planning an emergency meeting that will possibly lead to a probe of the judges. Last week Friday, Governor Abba Yusuf of Kano State reinstated Mohammed Sanusi II as the sole emir of Kano following the passage of a new law. Sanusi was dethroned in March 2020 and replaced by Aminu Adobayero under the administration of Governor Abdullahi Ganduje. The new law which came into effect last Thursday dissolved the four other Emirate Councils created by the previous government, merging them into a single Kano Emirate. Joining us now to examine the legal tangle and explore its wide-reaching implications for the entire country is legal practitioner Barrister Wahab Toye. Barrister Wahab Toye, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. On this week. Thank you. So you've been following what's been happening in Kanu State, the conflicting court orders from two different judges. And um, that has shined a spotlight on the Nigerian judiciary. Tell us, do you think, as a lawyer, whether we've lost the judiciary, the way we lost the political class, or is there still hope? Thank you, the moderator. We have not lost the judiciary. The issue there is the issue of its politics. And uh, what the CJ has done is to sanitize the earning officers among the judicial officials. And from the issue that arisen from Kano issue, the governor and his uh, own people went to state high court. And if you look at the order that was issued by the federal high court, the first answer, appears like protection of fundamental human rights of the deposed emir, that is a bayero. But the second order, if you read it very well, it should not be denied. The usage of his house as emir is like a restatement order from federal High court, which is not within the jurisdiction of federal High court. Because the issue of chisancy is a residual matter. It's strictly under the state high court. But the state high court of Kano order after that one have been issued. That shouldn't have been the modality. You go back to the court. Another of the court, once it's made, you have to comply. If you don't want, you go to that court and join issues for such another to be reformed. So instead of going to another court, displaying what I will refer to as judicial rascality, but it should not be the issue of judges alone. The lawyers that are involved will be exam critically examined. Yes, yeah, so I was coming to that. Um, we will also talk about jurisdiction. Yeah. But you have the Nigerian Bar Association. Of course. NBA. Explain to us, what's the role of NBA and what can they do in instances such as this? Because this is not a new problem. It has happened over and over again. And you as a lawyer see it regularly. Mm -hmm. What can the NBA do or is there a role at all? For the MBA? Yes, the MBA has a disciplinary committee. That could be the, one of their functions to invite the lawyers. Because the issue is once you are, brief, you are briefed as a counsel, you study the procedure to be followed. It's not that you must satisfy the interest of your client at all costs. No. Law and rules of court determine what you should do. A client should not even determine for a lawyer. What is you do? But in this case, you, the, the client would like to get it at all costs. And most of our colleagues, they find themselves that with due regard to the procedure on ground. So the issue I'm saying, in fact, is that those who file that of federal court, they know, knowing fully well that the federal court does not have judicial law, chief tenancy matter. You could see the circumstance is a tactical way. So they should be invited. So and those who are allowed to go to uh, state high court, knowing fully well there's an existing order, and the issue to do is you go back to that court, join issue for them, for, for the, uh, that order to be vacated. The loss is so simple, and the practice is so simple. 
multiplicity of uh, action on the similar matter is not allowed. So, so the MBA, they're doing their best to sanitize this profession. But I know this is one of the underside. I could feel it. They are already doing a lot on it. Not so, the MBA to So would you say that this NBA committee is functional? Very well. Right. Very well. They, they are, that is the guiding principle. They watch all practitioners to the core. And if you misbehave, they have the right to take it off. So where are that. the lawyers misbehaving? Where are the lawyers misbehaving? Yes. Where? Where are they misbehaving? No, so wh where are they giving conflicting uh, judgments when they know the lawyers that are not the one giving be conflicting judgments? Or judges, judges, rather. Judges. Yeah, judges. The judiciary are to take charge of that. You remember, even like Sanjay Lamido, when he was deposed, you could remember, he went to High Court. What he sought for then is that this will allow him to enter canon, not to become an over. So banishment goes with detriment, but the court says it's inrepugnant for a man to be restrained from coming back to his own. It's not a matter of restraining him. So there are ways you can draft your relief or claim before a court, but you must know whether that court judicial or not. So the lawyers will be properly investigated and then deal with them. That is my own point of view. So the National Judicial Council says it will hold an emergency meeting next week to discuss this and of course to talk about the judiciary and how this impacts Nigeria. Yes. What do you expect from that meeting or what do you think we will see coming out from there? Well, we, whatever I say here is be speculating. Yes. I will get, but I've already expressed my mind. Everybody is aware that the conflicting order that was is, is not appropriate at all. And we must eradicate all this judicial rascality in our legal procedure. This issue is more politics than law. It's more politics than law. And that's why we should find a way to distinguish between the legal procedure and political situation. And think that is what we inform the NJC. They will look at that. Because some are more, instead of using your law to guide your reasoning, they use their political affiliation to guide their reasoning. So that is the issue I can say. Let, let's speak more about jurisdiction. Part of the argument is that um, since some courts or judges can sit virtually, it means that the issue of um, jurisdiction, you know, may not really, um, may not no longer be respected, you know, if I may use that word. You know, would you agree with that? That the, because they cannot sit? So, so chief judges now, judges can sit virtually. Okay anywhere in Lagos, in Abuja, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, discuss or talk about any case. And so that means that if you're sitting virtually, you can rule on any case. This is an argument. As a lawyer, do you agree with this? Or what's your view on that? Definitely before a court of competent jurisdiction can make any judicial pronouncement, before a case before it, it must know that it has jurisdiction over the, the subject matter. Once you don't have Jurisdiction over the subject matter, whatever you say, is a nullity. So, and this jurisdiction power is enshrined in the Constitution. Uh, they are well stated. So, the, the issue of uh, sitting virtually or what have you is not. The, where they were being empowered is the constitutional provision that gives them the area of coverage by each of these strata of uh, our court. Um, in your view, what's the biggest issue that we have today? in the Nigerian judiciary? What are the main challenges? Uh, the main challenges I know from my own experience and people's comments is issue of over politicization of legal matter. And the lawyer could not even differentiate themselves from the politicians themselves. Too. All issues, they want to go to court to get the order, not in line with the rules of court, but in line with their own interest and unnecessary pecuniary inducements. That has been the problem. And people are now misbehaving on that. Remember recently, some senior members of the bar were being penalized, even at the APS court, for filing double processes. So if this thing can trickle down to all court of corporate jurisdiction, definitely we'll be able to sign it. And the bar associations, this is its time to come out and more serious about discipline, about members, who are in this, into this practice. So those are the problems of our politicization of the judicial aspect of it. And we don't need to interact with them. If we do our things according to the law, nobody is, everybody will be free. There will be, you will be able to sustain justice for everybody in respect where you come from. There is also a lot of money 
issue or money matter in all of this. You know, you know, lawyers will say they make quite a bit of money getting involved politically. So do you think um, there are issues of corruption in what we are seeing? That's, that's the reason why someone would knowingly do something that is wrong, that they know they should not take on. I won't subscribe to that. The issue of monetary influence into legal practice, I won't subscribe. We have Legal Practitioner Charges Act, which gives you the power of how much you can charge per brief. But what I'm saying, undue influence from your clients, we want to get things done at all cost. And you're not forgetting your field of practice. So once you get to that, you are going to the wrong end of law to compromise justice. So it's not a matter of uh, financial inducement on that side. But the overpolitization and unnecessary interaction with politicians. That has been the bane of judiciary recently. In the olden day, it wasn't like this. They are two separate, and we remember, even in Nigeria is a theater of uh, politics for, in this world. A lot can happen here that can never happen in any other client. Setting aside the law, doing it where you find judiciary should be separated from the legislature, from legislature, from the executive. Here, under presidential system of where we have what we call separation of power, the president, that is the executive, the legislators, and the judiciary, they work separate, but they still cooperate. But we find some people in the legislative arms doing the work of the executive, and we call it all right, the consensus project they are talking about. A lawmaker is not supposed to execute, it's to make law. The funding for the uh, uh, legislative arm, no, 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 not the judicial arm, mm -hmm. comes from the executive arm of government. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're supposed to be independent. Yes. The executive, judiciary, and the legislature. Mm -hmm. But the funding comes from there. Mm -hmm. Do you think, because of that, there is an undue influence on the judiciary? Oh, no, I don't believe that. The separation of our concept is to allow the two organs of government to be able to maintain their status quo and work for the entire country to, in order to maintain justice. That um, funding coming from uh, executive does not mean that executive is doing all the fund. They too, they have to do according to appropriation bill that has been passed into law by the legislature. But what I'm saying, a legislature is now doing the duty of a chief executive. And we say it's right. Nobody is challenging that. So this has is overlapping of functions, illegal overlapping of functions between the judiciary and legislature, between the legislature and the executive. So how do you solve this particular problem that you are mentioning? Thank you. That you are explaining. Uh, there are a lot. It depends on the, the society. You get the best from what you are able to elect to your parliament. If good people who know things normally are involved in Nigerian politics, if you look at uh, the first political era, the first republic, the second republic, the quality of members of the National Assembly, the executive, are different from what we have today. There are some that who doesn't even know what is legislative process, and they are in the Senate. They don't even know the act of making law. They don't, they don't have people to guide them. So the kind of people we have now in politics are more or less the less qualified people in our society. And that's what is causing the problem. Is that the same with the judiciary? If you say there are no, 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 five no. people, no, no, in the legislature and the executive, judiciary is not like that. The you say what type of procedure before you can become a member of judiciary? You need to be well educated, certified by judicial council, and all that. You can't. It's only the issue of character that one can comment. So issue of character. In spite of how highly you've painted the judiciary. A lot of Nigerians today, following from the 2023 elections and the, all the court cases and where it, we are today, some have given up on the Nigerian judiciary. It looks like the judiciary is supposed to be the last hope, but it looks like it is failing Nigerians. What's your take on that? They have not failed. The judiciary have not failed. Even they are performing very, very well. In what way? In the, the judgment have been so far made, pronounced. It is the society. They want them to do what is against the proceedings, against the rule of law, and against the constitutional profession. They want to get there at all cost. Are you getting my point? The judiciary, we are lucky to have the kind of people we have there now. They are men and women of caliber. Are you getting my point? But undue influence from the politics, 
politicians is what is causing problem. That is it. That's why I mentioned the word character. Okay, but when you cannot withstand that undue influence, that also means you have a problem. That's no, a problematic once, no, situation. There are very few of them. There are very few of them. And that why you see what the CJN did. Immediately, what happened in Kano? He sent for them. Come and explain yourself. And guide yourself with the rule of law and the constitutional provision. At the end of the day, you will see what will happen. They will penalize them because the two, they've already put themselves to the arena of the matter. You don't use one error to correct an error. Are you getting my point? Either the trial court didn't do well, the state high court, instead of joining an issue, it's like, I have my power here, you are within duty. No! Judiciary is to maintain justice for everybody. At the end of the day, Nigeria will stand best under this judiciary. Barista Wahab Toye, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you, man. I'm very grateful.